Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawtonen from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to use Photoshop to remove unwanted objects from our background. But first, make sure you check out all of the free resources available on our website. The link is below. I recently photographed this session with my daughter and her friends. I asked them to be models because I was able to get my hands on the brand new Pro Photo A1 light. And as of this recording, this light is not yet available. So I wanted to run a few tests. This is the before image. It just kind of shows the conditions we were working in. And here is the after with the light on, and obviously an edit. I used the Autumn Splendor presets available in the Flourish Academy to edit this photo because it's October, but our colors are a little bit drab this year, and I wanted to liven it up a bit. So again, here's the before photo. Without the light, you can see the tripod behind my daughter's legs, and then with the light, and a quick edit in Lightroom. Now I knew I was gonna have to remove the tripod legs from the background of this photo, and when I first came into Photoshop, I attempted to use the Content Aware Fill Tool. It's actually always where I start, but when I did so, this is what happened. Photoshop just didn't do a good job of determining exactly what pixels I wanted to remove and which ones I wanted to keep. I always begin with Content Aware because it's the fastest, but when it doesn't work, I have to explore different options. I'm just going to delete that layer and press Command or Control J in order to duplicate the background, and we're going to begin by making a selection selection. You can press L on your keyboard in order to select the lasso tools. Now in this case, I'd like to use the magnetic lasso tool because I think it will be the fastest and easiest. And the way the magnetic lasso tool works is you place your cursor on the edge of something you wish to select and you start to drag and Photoshop will automatically drop points where it sees an edge of contrast. Now occasionally, and all I'm doing is dragging my mouse along the edge of her jeans, occasionally it will grab an area you don't wish it to grab, maybe you accidentally go over here or something. You can press delete or backspace on your keyboard in order to remove that last point. And you can also click if you would like to manually add a point, which is what I'm doing right here when I transition to the shoe. But for the most part, I'm just dragging, hovering my mouse over this area, and I'm not clicking unless I need to. And I'm gonna come down around her shoe because unfortunately, oh, and there's an area, grab the wrong spot, delete or backspace in the keyboard, and let's click there in order to define that point. I didn't realize that the leg was showing just beside her shoe, which made it a little bit trickier. Now here, it doesn't matter, so I'm just dragging, clicking very quickly. And then I'm coming up to this side. Now the reason I'm making this selection is because I'm about to use the clone stamp tool in order to remove the tripod, but I don't want to impact the integrity of their legs or jeans. And the clone stamp tool can sometimes bleed over into areas you don't wish it to. Yeah, you could eliminate that by using masking, but Making a good selection helps as well. When you're ready to close this selection, you can place your cursor over the beginning point. You'll see that it changed, it has a circle around it now, and when you click, it will close it. Alternatively, you could double click and it will close it for you. I'm going to access the clone stamp tool by pressing S on the keyboard. I'm gonna make this brush a little bit smaller with my left bracket key. I'm making sure that my mode is normal, opacity and flow at 100. Then I'm going to press Alt or Option in order to click and define a source point. And then I can just start brushing away this tripod. Now I am constantly sampling new points by holding down Alt or Option and clicking to make sure that I don't get repeating patterns and I keep the integrity of the pixels around it. And the nice thing here is that when the clone stamp bumps up against that edge, it doesn't go beyond the selection, making it very easy and fast for me to make these adjustments. So once I've completed clone stamping that area, I can simply press Command or Control D in order to deselect. Let's zoom out with a Command or Control minus and look at that before and after, and I think that looks great. The next thing you would need to do is this small little area here, but it's gonna be the same technique. You're just gonna grab your magnetic lasso tool and click and drag, 
In order to make a selection, I'll do it very quickly here. This crate is a little tricky, but I can just click to drop those points. I'm gonna go over here, and this area doesn't matter as much. I'm gonna double click to close that. S on my keyboard to access the clone stamp, make that brush a little bit smaller. Alt or Option click to define, and just start brushing over this area. Oh, I grabbed part of her jeans, it's okay. I can get rid of that pretty quickly. And again, Command or Control D to deselect. Command or Control minus to zoom back out. And let's take a look at that before and after. And I think it did a great job. Certainly I had a shallow depth of field that was helpful. So that background is blurry. It was easy to correct once we made the proper selection here. The key is select before you correct and it can make it much faster and easier. The alternative to this is to use the clone stamp and then mask out the areas you don't wish. Either way works for me. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.